This case takes place on the 8th of May 2020 in a town called Havant in the United Kingdom. Louise Smith was a 16-year-old teenage girl who lived with her mother. She was known to have a passion for animals and was studying to become a veterinarian. Louise was also sadly suffering from depression and had an anxiety disorder. She was known to be somewhat impressionable and vulnerable. Louise would often have arguments with her mother. It's reported that she wanted to be more independent. She had a boyfriend named Bradley who she wanted to see more frequently. This is believed to be the main source of the arguments as her mother was getting in the way of this. Louise had also been monitored by social workers for some time and was put on a child in need plan due to her being a constant risk of domestic abuse and neglect. It was at the end of April 2020 that Louise decided she wanted to move out and live with her auntie instead, in the hopes of a more independent lifestyle. Her auntie was a 29-year-old woman named CJ Mays, and CJ was married to a man named Shane Mays, who at the time was also 29. The three lived together and initially got along quite well, with Louise even wanting to refer to her auntie and uncle as mother and father. It was during this time that the lockdowns in the United Kingdom were taking place and Louise didn't exactly get to live that independent lifestyle she so desperately wanted. On the morning of the 7th of May, Louise sent a number of messages to her friends. In these messages, she said how she wanted to leave her aunt and uncle's home. She told them that it was a long story, but described the two as vile. She explained to some friends that the couple treated her like she was a child, and even stated that Shane had been acting inappropriately, describing that on several occasions he had attempted to flirt with her. Louise even recorded Shane on her mobile phone as evidence to send to her friends. In the video, Shane can be seen tickling Louise's feet. Louise had decided yet again to leave the place in which she was living. She contacted another person who was close to her, a woman named Samantha Burt. She explained the situation with Samantha and Samantha offered Louise a place to stay and even said that she would allow Bradley to live with her too. This proposition seemed appealing to Louise and Bradley, but CJ soon learned of this and reached out to Louise to see if she could make amends and convince Louise to stay. CJ attempted to make contact with Louise over 50 times and eventually she responded. Louise, CJ and Shane managed to resolve the situation and convinced her to stay. With everything seemingly sorted, Louise and Shane went to the local shops to grab some items. They can be seen walking together on CCTV. From what I can gather, Shane purchased Louise some alcohol. The two then walk back to the house together and Louise began drinking. Later that night, she messaged some of her friends saying that she was heavily intoxicated and had passed out. She had also contacted a mental health helpline and told the person that she was struggling with the lockdown and was thinking of harming herself. The following morning on the 8th of May, Louise awoke and would message her friends for the final time at around 12.50pm. On screen now is the final photograph she sent. She also made plans with Bradley the night before and the two agreed to meet in the afternoon at 3pm. When 3pm came around, Bradley made his way to CJ and Shane's house to see Louise. When he arrived, he was greeted by CJ, who told him that Louise had gone out for the day and had not yet returned. During this time, Shane was also out of the house. Bradley pulled out his mobile phone and made several attempts to contact Louise, but was unsuccessful. At around 4pm, Shane returned home. As he did, CJ and Bradley asked him if he had seen Louise anywhere. He replied by saying that he had seen Louise only a few hours before. Shane explained that he had walked with Louise to a park before leaving her to go and visit his mother. He said that she had gone to see some of her friends and that he hadn't heard or seen from Louise since. Concerns for Louise began to grow, when in the following hours she was still unable to be contacted. 
Everyone close to her knew of her current mental state and that she had been struggling with her mental health. At 6.32pm, CJ made a call to the emergency services to report Louise missing, and a search was soon underway to find her. The police soon discovered that she made contact with a friend via Snapchat at around 12.50pm. The phone calls from Bradley that were made were picked up by multiple phone masts that cover the Havant Thicket area at around 4pm. Her mobile phone died and disconnected from the mobile phone network at 1 past 5 p.m. This would be the last time her mobile phone was picked up. Both Shane and CJ were questioned and asked where they had last seen Louise. And strangely, Shane changed the story that he had told CJ and Bradley. He told the police that he walked to Tesco with Louise on the 8th of May before she left to see some friends. However, when the CCTV footage of the route Shane claimed to have walked with her was reviewed, there was no sight of either Louise or Shane. The police requested that Shane accompany them on a walk of the route he and Louise had taken. And on the CCTV of this route, the police and Shane could be seen walking. This strongly indicated that Shane was hiding something. If Shane really had walked this route with Louise, the pair would also have been featured on the CCTV from May the 8th. The police also learned that Louise was thinking of moving out and that CJ was keen to make her stay. They also learned that Shane had been flirting and acting inappropriately towards Louise. These facts, along with Shane's story that didn't add up, made the police incredibly suspicious of the couple. It was on the 15th of May that the couple were arrested on suspicion of kidnapping Louise. Shin was questioned further by the police and they asked him where Louise was. He replied by saying, She could be anywhere. I took her to the skate park and left her there to meet a friend. I don't know where she is, otherwise I would have told you. Everywhere I have looked, there is no sign of her. I have nothing to do with her going missing. With no further evidence to suggest that the couple kidnapped or harmed Louise, both were released, and the police continued on with their search. It was on the 21st of May that the lifeless body of Louise was found. Her body was so badly beaten and burned that she was completely unrecognisable. The list of injuries her body had sustained was truly horrific. Louise had suffered brutal strikes to her face that caused her jaw to become dismantled, and the bone had detached from her skull. A hole had also been carved into her stomach, and a sharp stick had been inserted into her genitals. The stick had been inserted with such force that it had been pushed towards her liver. Louise's body was found on a bed of sticks that had been set up to act as a bonfire, and her body had been set alight numerous times. It seemed that whoever had done this had returned on multiple occasions and attempted to burn the body over and over again. The news of Louise's death swept across the area, with many leaving flowers near the scene of the crime. The police acted quickly, and a team of 100 officers went to work to identify who had done this, and it didn't take long for an arrest to be made. On the 27th of May, Shane and CJ were arrested yet again on suspicion of murder, and further evidence was found at the scene of the crime, including DNA evidence. On the stick that had been inserted into Louise, Shane's DNA was found. CCTV footage was also found of Shane leaving the Havant Thicket, the area in which Louise's body was found. Blood was also found on his shoe. The police theorised that Shane had lured Louise into the wooded area and attempted to force himself on her, but that this didn't work and Louise began to scream. To stop her from making noise, he savagely attacked her before defiling her body and setting her alight numerous times. There was no evidence linking CJ to the crime, so she would be released again. A hearing was held on the 15th of July at Winchester Crown Court. Shane was given the chance to enter a plea, and he pleaded not guilty to the murder of Louise. A trial date was set, and Shane remained in custody until the date arrived. Shane continued to deny killing Louise, 
That would be until the 17th of November 2020, the first day of the trial. But Shane did not admit to murdering her. He instead claimed that the killing was accidental and stated that he was guilty of manslaughter. The prosecution team gave a detailed account of the horrific injuries that Louise had sustained and they also brought the jury to the scene of the crime so they could better understand. They accused Shane of killing Louise after she rejected his advances. They showed the CCTV footage of Shane leaving the crime scene and the DNA evidence belonging to Shane that had been found on the stick that he had inserted into Louise. It was also found that Shane has an IQ of 63 and is in the 0.1 percentile for memory range meaning that 99.9% .9 of people at his age have a stronger working memory than him, and he would try and use this in his defence. Shane took to the stand and gave his account of what happened that day. He claimed that Louise had asked him to come with her so the two could have a conversation. They made their way to the wooded area where they began to argue. He then said the following, She picked up a big stick and hit me on the side. It hurt and I grabbed it off her and threw it on the floor. Then I punched her. I punched her in the face. I was angry for what she did the night before and just then. The first punch she was standing, the second time she went down. When she was on the ground the punching continued. I do not know how many times I punched her. But I heard her bones crack. I lost control of myself. I walked away and I could hear her moaning. I carried on walking and left. She had blood on her face when I punched her. Shane denied that he intended to kill Louise and tried to push the idea that he simply lost control as if that was some kind of excuse. When questioned as to why he created a hole in Louise's stomach, inserted a stick inside her and set her alight, he claimed he did no such thing. His defence team claimed that somebody else must have come along and done these things to her body. And when asked why he lied to the police and had given them a false story before being caught and charged, Shane claimed that he had not intended to purposefully lie about what happened and believed at the time that what he was saying was true due to him not remembering correctly. Thankfully, the jury did not believe a word. In the closing statement, the prosecution team highlighted the savagery of the attack and told the jury, Even when he saw the blood and heard the cracks, he carried on. The shattering of her facial bones, the total separation of the jawbone from her facial skull, the injuries to her head and face were catastrophic and disfiguring. Shane Mays was found guilty of murder and was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum term of 25 years. It's reported that he gave little reaction as he found out he was guilty. In a victim statement, Louise's mother described her daughter as strong-willed, happy and smiley who had the whole world to look forward to. When speaking to Shane in court, she said, You killed her in such a traumatic way. And what you did afterwards is beyond words. You are a monster. You damaged her so badly that I didn't even have chance to say goodbye, hold her hand or even kiss her. I will never forgive you for this. In January of 2021, a solicitor referred the sentence of Shane to the Crown Court of Appeals, as he considered the sentence to be far too low. Sadly, the appeal was rejected. We can only hope that his parole requests are rejected in the distant future. <laughs>